os irmãos também com a paz do Senhor Jesus. Com a paz do Senhor. Eu invito vocês a abrir suas Bíblias no livro de Isaías 53. Eu vou ler 4 e 5. Isaías, capítulo 53, versos 4 e 5. Tonight, especially, the Lord has shown in, 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 through the gifts of the Holy Spirit one woman that came tonight and she, she was feeling hurt for some from the family that said something in a, in a rough way and the Lord showed that before this service has ended, the Lord wants to heal, to cure her to close this wound and to give you peace, the peace that you need to continue serving the Lord. So says the word of God, verse four, surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chest made for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed. Lord, that your word can be healing our souls tonight. Speak to us, feed us, give us peace, give us joy. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. The church may be seated. Isaiah, in this prophecy, he talks about a prophetic moment that we are studying during our Bible school teaching. This chapter talks about the moment that Jesus was about to go to the cross and hundred years before Jesus arrived, Isaiah talks about the moment which is the most important moment of the hum human being, the moment that would divide the history of the world and before Christ and after Christ. And starting through this act, the Church of God will begin a journey that the word describes as a journey of trials, struggles, but also the conquerors, conquerings. And through 2,000 years, we are living this project. In the church of our days, we can say, blessed be the name of the Lord, because we've never been so close to the great day of the Lord, which is the rapture of the church. And we can look. Soon you're going to have so much room in the new church. It will be a blessing. Interesting that when you look at the church of the first years, there was a limitation because they say Jesus is alive, but they have a desire and a very excitement because they believe and they thought that Jesus would come back in their days and they still didn't have a word as we do have. There's a several pro prophecies that we need to fulfill before the Lord come back. And these prophecies will be the marks, the points to show how, how soon will be from the second come of Jesus. And now, 2,000 years after, we look at the prophecies and in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, we can say surely, this church is way closer through the rapture than everything else. So the Bible says that Jesus went to the cross, but he was not going 
like in vain or without the preparation. The condemnation that was upon us, but they bring us peace. So everything that steals your your peace, Jesus carried with himself to allow us to have peace. So the world of our days is living without peace, but the church that has the Holy Spirit knows that the peace of the Jesus Christ is upon her. And besides the world has no peace, we can live in peace because the Lord is putting in our lives, in our lives a peace. And this peace allows us to know that we don't belong to this world and soon we'll be raptured to live with Him forever. Through his stripes, we were healed. So when you you wounded, but the, the skin doesn't open the flesh, but it bruises. So everything that is inside you, all the emotional suffering, external or internally, something that people knows or not, God has the power to heal and to cure. The world is seeking for peace. But we have found the, the true peace because he has carried our sorrows every day. The Lord showed that this lady that I mentioned, we, we all can be wounded. We see pastors, deacons, workers. We have our struggles with our bosses, our, our employees, or people surrounding us and we come seeking for help seeking for her rescue and we one thing we can be sure the Holy Spirit talking to us will be talking to us and the peace of the Lord will come Jesus knew that he will die in a few hours and he says I'll go to the Father but I'll not leave you orphans I will send you a counselor, which is the Holy Spirit. And we might ask, did anybody have seen it, the Holy Spirit? So the disciples saw the Jesus, the Lord Jesus. Moses didn't see the face of God, but he saw the glory. But the Holy Spirit, nobody can see it. What is the shape of the Holy Spirit? It's not important. The most important is that we are not alone in this journey, but the Lord Jesus, He leaves us the one that every day works unceasingly in favor of our lives. The Holy Spirit of God, He is in our lives to, make, to bring peace and blessings and joy to your heart. Some people try to materialize the faith, but we don't need anything, symbols or objects, because our faith is solid in the Word of God, in the Word of Jesus. The Holy Spirit that we don't see, but we, we believe and we feel the actions, and one day He convinced us, and every day He is convincing us of our sins. He is the one that shows the justice of God. Whatever God has for us, He shows us. And He brings us conscience about, conscience about the judgment and what is right or wrong. So we, we know soon our Lord Jesus will come to rescue us. So He was wounded through our transgressions for our transgressions. We did not deserve. Jesus went to the cross without sin, but he didn't look at the circumstances. And he knew that we were not able to reach salvation through ourselves. So he surrendered in favor of our lives, my life and your life. So in the moment of difficulties, the Lord wanna tell you, you're not alone. 
you are in your house sometimes and you are going through difficult moments but you are not alone sometimes you are facing big struggles and trials but the Holy Spirit of God is talking to your heart saying my son, my daughter, do not go this way deviate because this will not be good for you so the Holy Spirit is guiding us, talking to us operating in our lives and helping us in a very safe way you don't need pastor to push you and the Holy Spirit is the only thing that you need He is the one that makes you to have a commitment with the living God and this God has promised you and whatever He has promised He will fulfill and you will be able to glorify the name of our God Jesus was at the cross it was noon and the Bible says that the sun disappeared three hours of darkness nobody could see anything Jesus was within his project fulfilling the project project of God the Father so he surrendered himself for every and each one of us and because he done that we can glorify his name because the peace of the Lord the blessing is reigning in our hearts in our lives in the life that, that Jesus has provided every day through his Holy Spirit it's renewed and we can praise him for that as we are walking towards eternity everything will go away it will pass away and one day we'll meet our Savior in the, in the clouds I was talking to my church another day and we are studying the parables of the workers and the first will be the last and the last will be the first then we might ask how this will be the last will be the first and the first will be the last the, the people from the the first church some died about 2,000 years so for 2,000 years they are waiting resting and there was a group of brethren that would not go through death you are here glorifying the name of the Lord and the order will come and you'll be raptured your body will be transformed when you meet your Savior in the clouds so the last one will be the first and they'll go straight encountering the Lord and the ones that departed before they are waiting 100 years 200 years a promise that the Lord has brought to us we are in expectation and no matter how long we're waiting the prime the, the first church is waiting for 2,000 years resting in the presence of the Lord and we have all reasons to glorify the name of the Lord because the Holy Spirit have provided us peace and love he has healed our wounds and he has blessed us so much
Let's stand. Someone can stand and glorify the name of the Lord. Lord, we bless you for this great love, eternal love, genuine love. We glorify you as for you have loved us first with an unconditional love. You have taken the cross in our places. You took upon yourself all our sorrows, all our struggles and pains. We exalt you for this great salvation and for your church, for your people that came to your house, for this work of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We would like to exalt you, Lord, as for your word, comfort us. We bless you. We are joyful because you, we have you. We bless your name for everything in the name of Jesus. And in your name we say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the consolations of the Holy Spirit can be upon all the people of God, now and forevermore. Amen. To all, peace of the Lord. So we remind the church that tomorrow is the day that nobody wants, right? We have to adjust our watches. If you late tomorrow, you're going to be after the service. So every year in my church, some loses the church because they arrive at the end. So your cell phone will adjust. But if you want, make an alarm. We're going to... You're going to wake up a little tired, more tired tomorrow. So tomorrow, 10.30, the bum Bible school teaching. Peace of the Lord.